Hey, hey, February 24th, 8.30 in the morning, and it is 62 degrees out here. Uh, this is just unbelievable, the weather we've had in February this year. Uh, last year, I think we had um, 10 inches of snow on the ground, uh, 25 to 30 degrees. Uh, this year, uh, we're setting record high temperatures. Uh, yesterday, I believe it got up to about 72, 73 degrees. Uh, numerous record high temperatures were busted uh, yesterday. So anyhow, we have gotten the okay from uh, Maryland Department of Ag uh, that we can start fertilizing wheat. Regulations dictate uh, when we can put fertilizer uh, on our fields uh, because of cleaning up the Chesapeake Bay. I don't always agree with all the regulations. They don't always make sense. The regulations state we are not allowed to start putting fertilizer on wheat until March 1, unless weather conditions dictate. Uh, they use uh, growing degree day formula, blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, because of the warm weather this year, uh, they allowed us to start, I think, I think it was last week sometime, the 15th of February, I believe. Uh, so I gave my fields a couple more days to dry out. And uh, so we're out here today putting fertilizer and spraying the wheat, uh, putting some uh, weed killer down as well. In years past, before uh, nutrient management regulations went into effect, uh, a lot of guys including myself, like to go out and put the fertilizer down late January, early February when the ground was still frozen uh, so you didn't leave tracks. Uh, now, of course, that is not allowed. Uh, we are not allowed to put fertilizer down on frozen ground. Uh, there are some technical regulations on what, constitute, what constitutes frozen ground. Uh, but there have been many years, um, that's the only way we've been able to get fertilizer on our wheat fields because of the, uh, the type of soils we have in their water holding capacity. And if we didn't do it when the ground was frozen, it would be middle to late March before we could get out to put fertilizer on. And uh, by that time, it's not helping the wheat as much. One of the disadvantages to waterfront farms uh, is the problem with geese coming in on the wheat field. So this particular farm, uh, we are right on the river. Uh, I don't think you can, maybe you can see it there through the trees, but that is the Potomac River out there. Uh, so being this close to the river, it uh, makes for great geese habitat. They love to come in on these green wheat fields uh, during the winter and eat the wheat. Uh, so this field in particular, they have uh, come in. Uh, it doesn't take long when you get a couple thousand geese in here to mow the field down. Someone was just asking me this morning if it affects yields. I have not seen the effect on yields in previous years. It will affect the height of the wheat when it is all said and done. The, the wheat where the geese have been doesn't seem to be as tall. So it's gonna be a little bit hard to notice this uh, on this field, but I will show you another spot. So this is an area where the geese have eaten, that they've come in, and you see the evidence here that they have been here. But all they're doing is clipping the wheat off. So you can see there, where they're just clipping the wheat off. So of course it's just a recycling program because everything they're eating, they're putting right back. Uh, so they're clipping the wheat off. They're not pulling it up out of the ground. This wheat is still gonna come out tiller and be okay. But they don't like edges of the field. And maybe you can see it's a little bit greener there along the edges, uh, the wheat is a little bit taller because they just don't go uh, where it's a little more protected around the edges. Uh, but here in the middle, they have affected it pretty bad. And this is the only field 
uh, that they've affected. Um, the smaller fields that get further away from the river, uh, they don't bother going in. It also helps uh, there being people living on this farm have some dogs, and the dogs I have noticed uh, will help keep the geese out of the field. But this field is a bit far from the house. The dogs don't always get out this far to uh, scare them up. So that is an update on uh, what is happening here in St. Mary's County this week. Uh, weather forecast uh, is supposed to be in the 70s today, so I'll be taking the long sleeve shirt off here soon. Uh, in the 60s tomorrow, a chance of rain coming in, so I'll get this week finished today. Uh, the rain coming in will help us uh, get this fertilizer down in the ground to the roots and uh, get this weed up and going. And it looks like the forecast for the next uh, five to ten days, temperature still in the 50s and 60s. So this is just uh, great weather. It looks like it's going to be an early spring. So uh, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is an area of the field uh, that the geese have not affected as much, and you'll be able to see the difference in the wheat. We're a little bit closer to the uh, tree line here. We were over there towards the middle of the field. Uh, the first, when we first stopped to uh, look at the wheat, uh, so as we've moved over here closer to the tree line, the wheat is greener and uh, more growth on the wheat because the uh, geese, uh, for some reason, don't come as close to the tree line. I guess they want to be more out in the open to see what's uh, coming upon them and to be able to uh, lift off into flight. So as you can see here, the wheat has more growth on it. It has not been clipped down to uh, even with the ground. Now the geese have been here. They just don't stay in this area as long. Uh, there's, a, there's one there that they've clipped on. But for the most part, they have not affected this as much. They have not come over and stayed here as long and eaten as much of uh, this wheat. So what we are doing is uh, putting some liquid nitrogen down uh, to help this wheat tiller some more and to get it off and growing. And we are also putting some weed killer down to kill all of this small growth of weeds that is uh, coming up here a little bit of grass there here's here's these weeds so we're we're after killing everything except the wheat so putting this uh, weed killer down along with some liquid fertilizer and uh, we'll try to come back in about another month and uh, put some more fertilizer down uh, as well reassess the weed situation uh, reassess the, the disease situation. If we need to put something else down, that's what we'll do. Well, it looks like I've got a flat tire. Uh, so, as you can see, it's not supposed to look like that. I don't hear air coming out of it. So there's no obvious holes in it. 
Um, but I just noticed this uh, about 15 minutes ago, starting to go down. Uh, so I have called my father and he is on the way with the jack and the bolts. Uh, we'll pull this tire off of here and see what needs to be done to it. Uh, my guess is something in the tube uh, that's punctured it with a slow leak. So we'll get this fixed and uh, finish getting this wheat sprayed today. Here I am down here on the river shore of the uh, Potomac River. I just want to show you the effects of some of the nutrient management regulations. Uh, Maryland has been probably the first in the nation um, with trying to clean up waterways. I think we've gone a bit far with some of our regulations on agriculture, uh, but anyhow, uh, waters the bay, the river, they are cleaner now. And as I testified before one of our state legislative committees last year to give the, the state of ag report, what I asked them to do is hold off on any further regulations for uh, nutrient management in agriculture until we can see the effects of what we're already doing. Because I told them, I see these effects. I've seen the effects already because of the farms that I work um, being on the water. And, and here it is. I'm not sure that how well you can see this. But this water is, is very clear and clean. Um, I'm looking out there probably where it's a couple feet deep, two feet deep, and you can see the bottom of the water. This, this water is clear. And so what we have done already has made a difference. But of course, like any good government body, they want to continue putting regulations on us. If the environmental community had their way, uh, we would not be able to put the first pound of fertilizer on any of our crops. Uh, we would just be expected to feed the world uh, with no fertilizer. And that's just not feasible. What we've done has, has made a difference, I, I admit that. But some of the regulations we've gone overboard uh, on, in my opinion. But anyhow, that's what we have to deal with, government regulations. Uh, and the state of Maryland has uh, sometimes been compared to the state of California with some of our environmental regulations. So it, it is a tough environment to farm in, in some respects. Uh, okay, that's what we've got here from the shores of the Potomac River. But as I said, February 24th, uh, 62 degrees out here this morning, uh, going up to 70-some uh, degrees. Uh, 
Okay, see ya.